Hi, my name's Adam, and welcome to today's video on recording a web test using our Rapiz test automation solution. So what we'll be doing today is recording a simple web test against this sample web application, www.libraryinformationsystem.org, and you can test this yourself at home afterwards. What we'll do is we'll log into this application, we're going to record a test where we create a new book in the system, verify the book was created, log out, and then play it back through several browsers. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is open up Rapiz, and in the previous video I showed you all the main elements on the page and what the different parts of the screen do. So what we'll do is go to File, Create New Test, and for today, we're going to be saving this test locally on our hard drive, so we won't use the Spyro test window that you see here. If this pops up, just hey, create local, and we'll skip that part. And now what we get to do is choose where we want to store these tests. And by default, it will store it on your hard drive in the My Repeat Tests folder, and that's great. And we'll call it uh, Web Test of Library Information System 1. And this is a web test, so we choose the option Web. In a pre other videos, we'll be talking about mobile and desktop, and we'll choose those options then. So for today, we choose web. We're going to start recording using Firefox, but you can use any of these browsers. And the last thing is we want to use the Rapiz visual language. That's our codeless or scriptless methodology, and we recommend using that. When we record the test, you're going to see the different test elements, the different actions that we call the flow. They're going to appear right here in this grid. Also, as we record the test, we're going to see the items on the page that we call objects appear right here in the object tree. But let's get started. So the browser is set to Firefox. I've got Firefox ready. So I hit the record button. And once the recording dialog box pops up on the bottom right, I can now start recording. So let's log in. And as you interact with the application, you'll notice that Rupees does record the options right here. And I'm going to log in with librarian, password also librarian. Hit login. And we want to verify that we logged in correctly, which is always a good thing to do. So we're going to use this verify control in one option. So we'll do control in one. We'll verify the text is librarian. Hit OK. And then we click on book management. We're going to do create new book. We're going to choose the option here to um, create a book called, uh, let's say it's a tale of uh, two cities. And that's historical fiction. We say insert. And we now want to verify it. So we go back to our verify button, do control and one, verify the text, hit OK. We want to return to our starting point, so we say log out, and then we hit finish. It's that easy, and that's really fast. We basically create a simple web test in about 20 seconds. Hit the option to append this recording to the end. There's nothing in the test right now, so it doesn't matter whether I do insert or append, but down the road you might want to add some steps, and you can just add them at any point, either by inserting if it's in between something, or just at the end by choosing append. And we'll hit save. Now you'll notice what's happened is, first of all, in the test scenario window, in, we've seen a set of actions be recorded. Every action consists of the object that we have to interact with, in this case, the login link, the action we're doing, in this case, clicking. And then, depending on the action, if there are any parameters, they will come afterwards. Now, for clicking, it's just a simple click. But when you're going to put in a username or a password, we choose the action set text. And then the text is chosen here, and we pass in librarian. Now, these actions are available in a drop down. So, if you recorded one action like clicking and maybe you want to double click or you want to change it to set text, you can change everything right here. Similarly, you can change the values that are set and you can change the different parameters. We'll come back to this in another video when we talk about data driven testing. Also, you'll notice that when we check something that's called an, an assert or a, or a verification point, that creates four lines. It creates an assert statement to verify that the text equals the librarian username that we expected. And we're going to say that get the text of the librarian cell object, check that the output matches the parameter, and here's the parameter right here. So that's where we're checking that the text on the screen equals the word librarian. So that when we log in, it did actually log in with the correct thing. After that, we create the book, put in the name, choose the drop down from the do select, 
and then we verify the book was created using the same verification point, and then we log out. Notice that the login button is actually the log out button. So even though it's called log out on the screen, it really is the login button just called twice. Now, when you go into the object tree, you'll see all of these objects that you see here with the icon are represented here under the menus, and they're grouped by the window name. So if you wanted to add things to your test, it's really easy. You could go in here, for example, and you can say, I want to click on the book management link. You can expand it, click, do, click, and drag it over here. Or you could just choose the action and then choose the object from the object tree in here. So let's say it was the text box, and I want to put something in there. You can choose the do set text. Or type in if you know the name. Hit enter and then it gives you the parameter and you put the value in like that. And that's how you can easily add and adjust your, te your test. You can insert new rows, remove rows using the uh, menu options or you can just do right click any given point as well. So it's really easy. If you want to comment something out, for example these two items at the end will not work because we've actually logged out by that point, you go in here and you can say comment and that way you can use them as documentation which is useful. Hit save. Okay, so that's our simple test. Let's go ahead and play it. So to run it on the same browser, which is Firefox, just hit the play button and it's going to play back. It's going to log in, create the book with the same name, change the drop down, insert the book, verify it, log out, and come back past. That's great. Now, suppose you wanted to capture screenshots and more information during playback. That's very easy too. To change that, you just go into the test and the test settings. This setting is per test case, so a different test may have different options. You can go in here and say, capture screens. Do I want to capture during playback or recording? Well, in this case, it's during playback, i.e. execution. So we'll say true. I want to include it in a report. And I want the whole screen, not just a little widget. So we'll do that. Okay, and then we can now hit play again, and it will play back a second time. This time it's going to capture the screen. So it's playing through. It's going to choose the name, the genre drop down, insert the value, log out. And this time we get screenshots. You'll notice the screenshots because you can expand the item. And there's the screenshots right here embedded in the test. Fantastic. If you want to see the entire screen as a big flow, we have that. It's called a screen flow. Click on the link. Pops up in a browser. And that will let you see the entire test in a single like this, a single window. I'm just going to scroll down slowly. And that's useful when you want to generate documentation as well from your test. Okay, great. Um, so the last thing we want to do, though, is just show that can we run this test in a different browser? The answer is yes, we could do that. All we need to do is go over here to the selector and we'll choose Chrome. We could choose um, IE as well. And we hit play. Here's Chrome over here. And so what we'll do is we will hit the play button and make sure Chrome is visible so you can see it. And here we go. And it's creating the book name, choosing the drop down, inserting the value, verifying it, logging out with screen capture again. Perfect. So we've now got a test passed in two different browsers. Again, we could play with that with any of the browsers, including the Selenium, Selenium Grid, Source Labs, Kubaton, Browser Stack, any cloud platform, headless browsers, anything that you can use, we can play back through. So that's uh, just a simple example today of recording a simple test of creating a book on a website and playing it back through multiple browsers. Well, thanks so much for watching. Please come to the other videos in our playlist for some more advanced web, desktop and mobile test automation and have a good day.